Good evening. My name is Alex Randall. I'm the athletic director and assistant principal here at Anderson Junior High School. Thank you for taking some time tonight to review our updates for season three athletics. Uh, we're really excited to get this season started. Um, and the players have really been working hard in tryouts. Um, coaches have put a lot of work in as well to create safety plans and um, a lot of things in play, put in, been put in place to keep everybody safe. Um, that's what we're going to go over tonight. We're going to touch on safety guidelines, our emergency action plans, positive coaching alliance and triple impact competitor, expectations for students, parents, and coaches, eligibility, register my athlete, and remind. Our mission here at Anderson Junior High School in athletics is uh, something that we, we review all the time with our SALT team and we discuss with our players quite a bit. Our mission here is at Anderson Junior High School, we strive to produce outstanding student athletes who demonstrate exceptional sportsmanship, academic excellence, and leadership in the community. Triple Impact Competitors, a way that we do that, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. EVC this year, we've we've been working really hard to keep every, every sport going um, and create safety plans that make everything safe for students, coaches, and spectators um, to be able to be at. Uh, so everybody's been working on those. All of our coaches have been trained on our COVID-19 guidelines. Um, they share that information with athletes. Um, our students are all cleared uh, prior to the season through Register My Athlete. Uh, because of our limited uh, facilities, tryouts um, sometimes may get larger, and we just want to make sure we're up front and let you know that. Um, this season, for season three, um, we didn't have any any uh, large groups um, exceeding the 50. Um, and in addition to these, we also work with AIA um, for sports modifications um, specific to each sport. And coaches are aware of those rules, and we'll discuss those with you at your team meetings. We are in season three. You can kind of see our, our times don't line up normally like they do at the quarters. But uh, season three, we've had tryouts. Our season will start on uh, Tuesday next week. Um, each team is a little bit different schedule. You'll get those um, schedules from your, from your athletes shortly. Um, and also that information will go out on social media and on Remind and through Register My Athlete. So you'll have those updated schedules. Uh, when we come back from spring break, there'll be a week of reconditioning time. Um, time, time that we don't play games, we give, give players a chance to get back into it, um, and then playoffs start right after that. Safety guidelines. Face coverings are required at all times. Um, masks must be worn 100% of the time by coaches, sponsors, directors, etc. at all times. Um, students must also wear them at all times, including while in competition. Um, all sports um, athletes must have them on at all times throughout. This is a um, decision that was made by EVC to follow uh, the guidelines that AIA has created and, and has been following. And we've been able to see some success at the high school level with them. Um, Obviously, the students are taking drinks or students that are uh, need to catch their breath. Um, of course, of course, that, that's acceptable. But we, what we ask them to do is just to um, step as far away from everybody as you can. Um, get your drink of water, uh, catch your breath, and then your mask goes back on. Students that refuse to wear a mask or are repeatedly taking off, um, given warnings, they're going to be removed from the team. Um, and then uh, the, that'll be reported to administration. If students are having issues uh, wearing and following our safety mitigations during school, um, it will also impact their ability to be part of a, of a sports team here at Anderson. We wanna let you know that we're sanitizing and cleaning everything uh, regularly and, and uh, consistently. Um, all teams have a bucket where they have spray bottles, gloves, um, sanitizer. Um, they've got team plans of how they are going to sanitize individual items. Um, the rags are laundered daily uh, so that we keep everything clean. And then we've uh, spent a lot of our tax credit money this year to purchase additional items 
for athletics so that we can have um, students will be able to check out individual items um, so that we're not sharing items as much as possible. Students are responsible for their own items, so they should be um, bringing, those, uh, bringing those items themselves, storing them, cleaning them, transporting them to and from school, um, and should not be sharing equipment at any time with other students. Uh, we have these routines in place, and again, coaches are going to go over those with you. Their specific team, team plans they'll go over with you at the team meetings. Our custodians have really worked hard all year, um, especially in these, uh, in, these, in these areas where um, we need a little extra cleaning and disinfecting throughout. So uh, we just want to let everybody know that we, we, uh, our custodians clean and disinfect all rooms every night. Um, when they're absent, other custodians are uh, making sure that every, every spot of our campus is covered. They take care of cleaning and disinfecting daily, our gym, locker rooms, wrestling rooms, outdoor areas, lobby, bathroom, cafeteria, weight room, classrooms. Uh, but that doesn't just mean they do it one time and that's it. They're, they're doing that uh, routinely throughout the day as well, um, especially in our gym, our wrestling room during season three. Um, those rooms are being con constantly cleaned. Locker rooms. Locker rooms. Uh, are limited at this time. Uh, we only are asking students to use the restrooms that, or use the locker rooms that they absolutely have to. Um, so when they come to practice, we want the when they come to come to practice before school. We want them to come ready, dressed, ready to go. Um, and when they uh, come after school for practice, we want the once they once they're changed out, we want them to exit out of the locker room, and they are not going to actually they're not going to be able to go back into the locker room. Um, they'll wear those clothes home. So students, uh, when they're in the locker room, the expectation is that they're staying socially distanced and wearing their masks as much as possible. Uh, they, once they're changed, they are um, taking all of their items with them um, and they're going to where the coach has designated them to go to. Um, also, um, we have soccer this season. Cleats never get worn inside of our, our locker room or our gym. We wanna make sure we keep our, our gym floor looking nice. Uh, and it, it can be really unsafe walking around our locker room with cleats on. So we um, do not allow students to wear cleats in the locker room or in our gym. Every day, students are screened when they arrive, uh, arrive to practice. Um, before school, all staff students are required to self-screen if they have any observable COVID-19 symptoms. Um, that's, prior, that's prior to coming. So we ask you if your student's not feeling well, we want to err on the side on the side of safety and keep them home. Uh, coaches and sponsor, uh, coach and sponsors, they will do screenings every time that the students come. We call that our C3 form. Uh, they're going to ask them questions, and we'll go over that in a moment. You'll get to see that. Um, they ask them questions, and um, just to make sure that everybody's feeling feeling okay um, uh, before they come into contact with other students. Um, officials, medical staff, media, anyone else that's at a game, um, we also uh, require them to go through screening um, with the athletic department. Any person with symptoms must notify the school, personnel, be removed from participation, stay home, self-isolate, and contact their primary care provider or other health care professionals. Um, if, if we have a situation where um, a student is um, positive on our campus or any individual is positive on our campus and your student um, is deemed to be within close contact, which is um, at this time within uh, six feet or closer for 15 minutes or more um, over the course of a day, uh, then um, I will be reaching out to you um, to talk to you about uh, what the C2 form is and how to clear a student for um, to be able to return to athletics after having COVID or um, being, being quarantined. This is what our C3 form looks like. Coaches have coaches ask these questions as they come, as they come to them. When they, when they show up to practice, they stay socially distanced. Uh, they spread out and they come through one at a time. And the coach will ask them the questions. Do you have a fever? Do you have a cough? Do you have a sore throat? 
and they'll go through and ask them all these questions. It's really important that athletes are honest and upfront with their coach about how they're feeling. If a student's not feeling well, they need to not be at, at, at an event or um, around other students and we actually keep them home. All screenings occur so interesting, like I just said. And the big question we get is what happens if a student says yes when they're going when they're going through the screening? Um, that that athlete's going to ice, uh, be isolated, so they'll separate from everybody else. Um, and family will be contacted to come pick that student up. And then after that, the health office or the um, athlete or the AJHS administrator will contact the family to discuss that C2 form and what the next steps that need to be taken are. All right, pick up and drop off. So for teams that have morning practices, um, we ask all parents to pick up and drop off regardless of time um, in the bus ramp in the front of our school. Um, athletes come prepared, like we said. Um, also make sure that your student athlete has a water bottle at all times. We'll have water jugs um, that we've retrofitted with um, valves that don't require any hands-on. Um, but we, we, uh, we really need athletes to bring a water bottle with them to practice every single day. Uh, so they're gonna go to the spot that the coach has designated them to be their check-in spot. It may be outside of the gym, it might be off, off to the side of a field. Um, it'll be a spot where, um, it'll be a spot where they're entering the facility, but also uh, where the coach can still supervise the uh, what's going on at practice. And then the coach will do this. Uh, will do their C three uh, forms. They'll screen all the students and send students to their designated areas. In the afternoon, students go directly from uh, class when the bell rings at three thirty three. They go directly to the gym and they social distance in the gym while they wait for their coach. Uh, while they wait for their coaches to tell them where to go. Um, this season, all of our teams are checking in outside of our gym. So they'll wait on the JAG pad and coaches are, are standing outside to, to screen them. Um, once, they, once they've been screened, then they can go into the locker room and change. Uh, once again, stay socially distant, keep their masks on. Um, once they're dressed, they need to go to where they're supposed to be. And at the conclusion of practices, athletes will go to the bus ramp, take all their items and go to the bus ramp. Coach will supervise athletes out there. We really ask that you um, be, be there on time um, to pick up students uh, so that our coaches can get home um, after practice is over. Um, if, you, if you need to let your coach you know you're running late or anything like that, Remind is going to be a great way to, to communicate with them, and we'll get you that information here in a little bit. On game days, again, students um, come to the locker room. Uh, if they are uh, being released during the school day, we ask them to wait outside of the locker room and then the coach will meet them there. Um, they don't go um, anywhere where they're not supervised. Um, and then coaches uh, will also screen them again and um, communicate our screening form and the visiting team or the um, team we're playing will share C3 forms uh, to ensure that everybody's been screened. Hydration, like we said, is really important. All the water, fountain, all the water fountains on campus have been um, closed at this time. Uh, we've, we uh, have got some retrofitted uh, water jugs that we use throughout the day. Students can refill water bottles and those are sanitized uh, routinely. Um, they're constantly being cleaned and sanitized. Um, the water jugs uh, that are provided at practice, uh, coaches are going to provide uh, water break times um, in practice for students to refill their water bottles, get drinks, um, and then the coach will take care of sanitizing those jugs um, right after that. Uh, for for games right now, we are not allowing uh, any any concessions at any of the games. Um, hopefully, this will change soon, but not until. Uh, return to normal large venue stadium spectator attendance. Athletic tutoring, you're going to, uh, starting the second week of the season, you're going to start getting uh, a form. If your student has any Fs, that'll uh, tell the student that they've got an F in a class and that they need to go to tutoring the following week. Um, anytime, for every 
class that a student has an F in, they will go to tutoring with that teacher at least one time the following week. Uh, we we are uh, right now we aren't able to bring in our outside tutors that we're working with them uh, because we're not allowed to have volunteers on campus. Um, but through the first two seasons, this has really worked well to ensure our students are uh, able to take care of their academics and that we're putting academics uh, first because they are student athletes. All right, game day management. This is where a lot of things are a little are. Most, most of these things have changed since previous seasons. Uh, so at this time, uh, as of when we're making this video on, on February 9th, um, only two legal parent or guardians are allowed per player at home games and in away games for all EVC events. Uh, there's no children allowed. It's got to be the parent or guardian for the, for the uh, student competing. Uh, we know that this this puts a strain on split households um, where there may be maybe more than just two. But at this time, AIA and EBC are only allowing uh, two. So we're going to ask uh, families with split households um, to work work that out and uh, figure out who's going to be attending each each game and, um, so that only two parents are there for each of them. Students are going to receive two wristbands the day before a game to give to uh, you so that you can put those on uh, before you come. If you forget your wristband, that uh, it'll be okay. We have, we'll have a list of uh, athletes with legal guardians and parent names on it at, at um, both our soccer fields and at our gym for wrestling and our, for wrestling and basketball. This year, when you come into our gym, there's actually going to be a check-in table and we're going to ask everybody to, um, stay socially distanced while people check in, um, but it's really important only two per two two people per athlete, two parent or guardians per athlete, um, and that's the same at all EBC events. So we just ask you to help help us out um, and not not bring additional people uh, because they will be turned away at the door um, either at Anderson or at other places. Uh, you, when you go to other schools for away games. Um, they'll have similar things set up where uh, a check-in point and you'll you'll go through there and um, they'll check they'll check off uh, your your name or check off the student's name and the number of, of adults uh, that, are, that are attending uh, transportation this year uh, we are uh, giving parents and guardians the option to utilize our Form F if you wish to transport your student independently from the buses. We have buses that take students to and to games and home from games. Um, on the buses, we keep a uh, social distance. Um, they're spaced out as best as possible. Masks stay on at all times. Um, coaches are always monitoring that on the bus. Uh, they they spread themselves out it it uh, spread themselves out usually one per one per row unless we um, have to uh, double up but that that uh, with our numbers doesn't happen very often uh, but you are welcome to transport them to and from games that's the form F um, that you're going to receive from your athlete um, there are three options option A is that the student's going to drive themselves. Um, this is for high school students, so obviously our students aren't going to be driving themselves. So these are the two that are that are uh, pertinent to uh, junior high sports. So the options you have, uh, option B, uh, is if you're going to take them as the parent or guardian, you're going to be taking them to and uh, to and from the game. Um, you can you can fill that out, uh, and then the other option you have is option C, uh, and you can allow them to carpool with another parent of a district student or another responsible adult over the age of 18. Um, you, you can fill that information out there. As usual, just so we have previous, previous uh, years, after a game's over, you're welcome to pick up your student. You don't have to have this transportation waiver completed. Uh, You'll check out with the coach. Uh, well, the coach will give you a spot, It'll probably be outside of a gym or outside of a field 
socially distant. Um, and we're telling, we're, we're, we're allowing coaches this year um, to have, just to see you have a conversation, say they see you, see your kid going home with you and, and sign off so that we're not having um, pens that are being shared by multiple people. Um, but you do have that option also to pick them up after games. Each team, like I said earlier, um, has specific rules and guidelines that they're that they've put in place to help with the individual parts of a sport. Um, those sanitizing individual items, how are they going to social distance, how they would like students to arrive, and how they're going to dismiss, um, and then other procedures that go along with their sport. You'll be receiving a packet from your um, student athlete, and you also receive it in Register My Athlete once teams are set. Um, and you'll you'll see this uh, safety plan for your team. Teams will also be having parent uh, having a family meeting uh, to go over um, their expectations and uh, specific things to their teams, and they'll be able to talk with talk with you more about those. And once again, we 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 just always want to re reiterate just general best practices, continuing to practice good hygiene. Uh, we've got sanitizer all over our campus. Um, every time you walk through a door, you should be able to find a sanitizer. So we ask you just to sanitize, keep your masks on. Uh, masks are required at all times on on our property as well as any other uh, any other EVC property. Um, so we ask you to keep those on, even if you're at an outdoor sport. Please make sure those masks are on at all times. Um, please, please. Uh, just follow those general rules of how to how to stay safe. All right, next I want to talk about our emergency action plans. Uh, we we obviously never want to be in a situation where we're implementing our emergency action plans, but we want to make sure everybody knows what they are in order to be prepared in these situations. So the first thing we ask is remain calm and follow the the, the instructions um, if you're on site. Communication to families is going to be through Remind and Infinite Campus Messenger. So it's really important when you get the information on signing up for Remind, it's really important that you sign up for both Remind, uh, the athletic Remind, as well as your team Remind. If we're ever in an emergency situation, Remind will be how we're communicating with families. In a lockdown situation, families will not be able to pick up students until they're released by school personnel. Uh, we know the, the instinct is going to be to want to come to the school and we're going to ask you um, to not, not come to the school until, you, until you're told to come to school um, just so we can uh, emergency personnel or whoever needs to um, get into campus. Uh, we, we are able to do that without having uh, traffic jams and, and issues uh, for emergency personnel. All right, at an indoor activity, if there's a fire, we're going to evacuate the bleachers. Uh, we're going to evacuate from the gym, and we're going to go to the bleachers on the football field. That's where we'll evacuate to um, or onto the field. The announcer will announce where to go, and we'll just ask you to follow those directions. During a lockdown, if it happens during a game, uh, we want you to remain seated, uh, follow the directions from the amount, announcer, coach, administrator. Uh, we'll we'll let you know where to go, um, but we'll make those announcements over over the speaker. If a lockdown takes place during practice, um, our coaches move the athletes to the locker room or another room um, that can be secured, which means the, um, the students can be moved away from windows um, and doors can be locked. Um, they remain silent, and mute their cell phones, um, which means we we ask them not to not to be on their cell phones uh, during those during those lockdown times uh, so that so that we don't have any noise coming from uh, from an area where we're trying to stay silent uh, if if it's okay the coach the administrators or the police department will will let them know that it's okay to send messages if you're at an outdoor activity and there's a fire we want you to move the furthest possible point from campus that you can. Um, we'll move. We'll move athletes to the farthest point away from the building as we can, um, and assemble there. 
if we go into a lockdown during an outdoor game, uh, we're going to ask you to follow the direction of the announcer, coach, administrator. Everyone will be directed inside the gym to a secure area, to the closest area where we can securely lock down, um, or possibly um, if it's deemed safer, we may evacuate to uh, Brooks Crossing Park. Um, but most in most situations, we will lock down inside of a building. If a lockdown takes place during practice, we're going to move to a locker room or the nearest room that can be secured, just like on the other, just like the other one. We're going to remain silent, mute cell phones, and once again, we ask students not to be on their cell phones unless they're directed by by an adult. All right, Positive Coaching Alliance (PCA) you're going to hear that a lot um, is what we're all about here. So at Anderson Junior High, once again, we strive to produce outstanding student athletes who demonstrate exceptional sportsmanship, academic excellence, and leadership in the community. Our goals this year, uh, act, we have three goals. Academic goal, 80% eligibility at the end of the season, each each season. Season one, we were um, we, we beat that goal. Um, we were we were really close to about 90%. Um, second season, we uh, didn't have attend. We didn't have academic um, eligibility because of the way the season sat. Um, but third season, we will we will be doing eligibility checks, and once again, that goal is eighty percent. We have a character goal to create uh, create an award, uh, triple impact competitor of the year award. Um, this is being done by our student athlete leadership team. We call them Salt Team. Uh, they've been working the last couple months on creating um, criteria and, and the process for for uh, selecting these uh, triple impact competitors of the year, and I'm really excited uh, to see that one see that one uh, that goal be met later this year. And then last uh, community goal, another uh, project that is being being led by our salt team um, to create and complete a community service project um, within our community. Uh, another thing that they're organizing, so you're going to start hearing more information about that uh, when we get to uh, April. Positive Coaching Alliance is is the curriculum that we use uh, to teach character ed um, through athletics. So coaches are promoting positive lessons with athletes throughout the season. Um, ask your students what what lessons they're learning. Uh, what what games they played or what um, what playbook what play from the playbook they did and hopefully they're able to tell you tell you what those are um, those are lessons that just teach them uh, the three the three different characteristics of being a triple impact competitor making themselves better making their team better and making the game better uh, we recognize uh, Students that are demonstrating these characteristics of being a triple impact competitor every week uh, with the triple impact competitor of the week award. Coaches select one or two players from their team each week. They receive an award and we, we post them on the wall. If you ever come into our gym, uh, take a look at our Jag star wall. Um, it's starting to fill up. This is the first year that we're putting, putting those pictures up. We, we just got that installed and um, it's really turning out well. It's really exciting. Um, and once again, triple impact competitors, as we all know, is an athlete who works to improve on oneself, teammates, and make and the game as a whole. All right, so we've kind of talked about these already, but um, triple impact competitor makes himself better uh, by being committed to improving themselves on and off the field, always looking for ways to uh, perform better, um, whether it's in their on their team or in the classroom um always looking for ways to make themselves better teammate making their teammates better help your teammates through positive reinforcement and by prioritizing team success over individual success uh, it's hard to look beyond oneself but triple impact competitors focus on each other and then finally the game this one can be a little bit confusing um but it these these students demonstrate um a respect for the rules, opponents, officials, teammates, and self. Uh, a triple impact competitor strives to make the game better. Uh, so that's that's what a triple impact competitor is. So once again, that academic goal, how are we going to get there? Uh, we start with uh, grade checks. 
grade checks and tutoring. So our CFSP policy, grade checks run every Thursday of the season. Um, it's run for informational purposes to start, and then there's there'll be eligibility dates that are set. Um, those are still forthcoming for this season. As soon as that information's out, coaches will communicate that to uh, the athletes. Um, any student who's deemed ineligible, so at at the point where we we determine that that's that's going to be our eligibility date, um, students that are ineligible have to miss a minimum of one competition the following week. If they're if they get their grades up, then they're able to compete. If they do not, then they um, uh, remain ineligible until they get their grades up. And then after progress reports, each Thursday's grade check will be for eligibility purposes and stipulations uh, that we just went over. All right, so at Anderson, how we do it, on Thursday, we run that eligibility report and we'll start that on the second week of every season. Coaches uh, be notified of students' academic eligibility um, and then students are gonna get a form that they will take to their teachers if they have an F. Uh, for them to talk to their talk to their teacher and figure out what they're missing, they'll do that on Friday, and then over the weekend, students uh, are going to come home. They're going to review that uh, sheet with you, and then have a parent or guardian sign that. And they're also going to create an action plan. This is something we added added this year that's um, been really successful, uh, giving our students kind of um, teaching them those skills of. Uh, how are we going to improve and how are we going to, what are we going to change so that we don't find ourselves in academic um, ineligibility again? Coaches review those few forms when they come back on Monday. Students are going to hold on to those so they have their action plan and their grades, but they're going to, the coaches will discuss those with the, uh, when they come back the following Monday. Once a student's eligible, the athletic department will communicate to the coach and the student. Uh, they cannot play until they've been cleared by the athletic department. We we remind um, coaches and teachers that they must be cleared through the athletic department. Uh, they cannot be cleared um, by anybody else. So uh, if you have any questions on this, feel free to reach out to our athletic office anytime. That's what the form is going to look like for eligibility. If if you see this form come home, um, that's 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 what it kind of looks like and it will have all of those policies and expectations on there as well so once again thursday eligibility is run students get the forms friday students speak with their teachers over the weekend students review with their parent or guardian they create their plan of action and then the following week they review the plan with the coach and they're going to attend tutoring for each class that they have an f a minimum of one time that following week all right, character goal. This is the next part of our student-parent-coach agreement is behavior. So student-athletes um, may serve a suspension from the team or be released from the team if they're experiencing behavior issues with the team or at school. This includes school suspensions or reoccurring referrals, even for different violations. The student is representing the school when wearing a uniform and we hold our student-athletes to a high standard and expect them to be respectful and responsible. Parent and spectator expectations. Uh, it starts with the adults. And um, at Anderson here, I, I feel extremely fortunate to have uh, such amazing parents and guardians. You guys do an outstanding job of uh, showing sportsmanship and how to um, compose ourselves uh, in in tough situations um, when maybe a ref makes a bad call uh, our athletes look to the adults um, for how to respond and uh, so I think it, it really starts with all of all of us adults on showing our students athletes how to respond in those tough situations um, so uh, we expect sportsmanship respect and positive behaviors are modeled to our student athletes by all adults that means coaches parents spectators everybody at all times so we're using good sportsmanship and being respectful to athletes opposing fans coaches and officials at events um, even before and after um, a violation um, i do want to let you all know if there if there is a violation 
you will be asked to leave the game possibly and, and could be suspended from future AJHS and CUSD events. All right, so not not always are our parents or parents and guardians going to see eye to eye with a coach uh, a coach's decision, um, and you may have a concern. Um, that happens from time to time. So what we ask you to do is follow this this uh, guideline as far as uh, who to contact. So we always want you to talk with the coach first, um, but please wait 24 hours from the whatever whenever it was. Give give some time for. Cooler has prevailed. Um, we don't want to have um, parents coming up upset or guardians coming up to coaches upset after games. We want you. We want to wait 24 hours, let everybody cool down, and then um, have a have a respectful conversation with that coach. Um, you, all of their emails and phone numbers are available on our website. Um, if you're not satisfied, then please give me a call. Uh, my phone number is on the screen there. My email address as well. Um, if you're if you're not satisfied with the the response that I that I've given you, uh, our principal's name is Allison Stewart. You would contact her. Uh, if you're not satisfied with that answer, then um, you would contact Marcus Williams, our district athletic director, and finally our um, assistant superintendent of secondary education is Craig Gilbert. Uh, would be the last person you would go to. All right, we've talked about SALT, and one thing that they created in the 1920 school year that was really cool um, is they, they went and talked with, their, with all of their other athletes, and they asked them, what is it that you want people to do when they come to games? So this is the expectations for spectators when they're at games, and these were created by our students. So be positive and respectful respectful towards all athletes, officials, coaches, and other spectators. Remain seated until breaks in the game, timeouts, end of quarter, etc. Eat all food and drinks in the lobby, including gym, and clean up after yourselves. Follow all Anderson Junior High School and Chandler Unified District policies and rules, and enjoy the game by cheering on all athletes competing. This is something that, once again, I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for all of you, our, our families do a great job of these things. You, you guys are um, do an outstanding job when you're at games, and we really appreciate that. You're going to get a form in the packet that's going to cover all of that information that we just went over. It's called our student parent coach agreement. It's going to be in the packet that your athlete's going to bring home with your schedule, um, your, your transportation form, um, and remind information to sign up. Uh, information to sign up for Remind. Um, those will be coming from your coaches later this week uh, once teams are set. This form is going to get returned to the coach. We ask parents and students to sign this, um, acknowledging that you understand and, and we'll, we'll follow all of these guidelines and expectations that have been set forth. All right, register my athlete. Everybody's been re everybody's on register my athlete. If you're watching this, um, obviously, hopefully, we've gotten through that. I want to let you know we are getting close to the start of uh, of registration for the 21-22 school year. Uh, physicals can be completed anytime after uh, anytime after March first. And registration on Register My Athlete is going to open up on, on uh, May 1st. So you'll be able to get all that information put in. Uh, Register My Athlete is where we're going to send information to team uh, about team information. We're also going to send schedules or updates. Um, the packet that I've been speaking about is going to get emailed there as well. So please make sure you check the email that you have associated with your Register My Athlete account. There will be a lot of important information that will be sent there. It also helps us to track eligibility and injury management. It's a, it's a great software tool that's really helped us to, to organize um, and keep, keep everything straight um, with athletic paperwork here at Anderson. So the same information I just went over. Uh, that was our registration event that we had previously. Uh, we're hoping that that will uh, be available again um, in the fall, we will uh, get more information out as, as it becomes available. 
All right, remind. We use remind to make communication with parents easier and faster. Please sign up for both your AJHS team as well as um, as well as your team. So um, it's really simple to do. You're going to get a paper with directions, um, but you can do this right now if you want to sign up for the athletic team. Um, you can pause the video or uh, if you can type really fast, send a text message uh, to the number 81010. Send the text JAG Sport, um, and you will get directions to sign up for Remind as well as our, our group. If you're already on Remind, you can just put that JAG Sport in as a new class to join. Um, or if you do the same thing, it'll, it'll automatically take you there. What do we communicate here? Game and practice times and changes. Um, so be able to get you that information right away. Um, team accomplishments. Coaches are always sending out positive things that, that happen with their teams. It's really really a, a really cool thing to see. Um, we'll send out those register my at, or we'll send out those uh, triple impact competitor of the week awards as well. Uh, it's just a really cool way for all of us to to share in everybody's success. Um, and then also coaches can communicate individually with you about grades and behavior. Um, you can communicate with coaches directly. Um, and all of this is done without without giving out um, anybody's cell phone number, so it's a it's a safe way of communication. All right, the next portion of our presentation has to do with um, Dignity Health, who is our provider of uh, our athletic trainers this year. Um, they're really really great at um, working with our athletes. If you have a student that gets hurt, uh, we have a lot of resources that are available. And that information, uh, I'm, uh, the, that information is going to be on the screen here shortly. But there's a lot of ways. Uh, there's a lot of things that athletes have access to because they're uh, because they're athletes in Chandler Unified School District. Um, if they do get hurt, so um, take a couple minutes here. I'm going to go ahead and go through a few slides. Thank you for taking time to review all of this information. Um, my contact information is on the screen here, along with uh, Ms. Pardo. She's our uh, administrative assistant. She she handles a lot of a lot of the paperwork and can answer all of your questions uh, when it comes to athletics here at Anderson. Um, both of our email addresses and phone numbers are listed above. Uh, we also love to see. Uh, see the pictures that you post on social media. And now that we have uh, families at games, we would love, to you, love for you to share um, pictures from the games um, on social media um, with our hashtag or with our, with our uh, just go ahead and tag us on whichever one you're using uh, and like and follow us as well. Thank you again. And if you have any questions, feel free to give me a call or stop by our office anytime. Go Jags.